Hi everybody, I'm Elliot Brecht, and I wanted to go over today a few of the careers that we're seeing that are actually going to survive the second wave and are surging. So there's seven careers that I want to tell you a little bit more about because we are hearing lots about obviously R&D and pharma and biotech like in the news every day and how much is going into them and how much they're doing. But there's several other careers that are actually still going to be surging right now that are safe bets. And these are things that you want to try and make sure that you're aiming for. Of course, like if you've been following any of the news in you know recent trends for business recently, everybody knows about data scientists. You know, it's impossible not to notice the rapid growth and the utilization of big data and the anal analysis that needs to go around with this as well. So these positions are surging. You know, universities are starting to offer courses in them, but like these careers and these opportunities are going to be around for a long time, especially now that everyone's staying and working from home. They need more people who can actually utilize and you know, take their knowledge and rapidly, you know, disseminate the information and take all this data that's coming in and then output something in a useful manner. Because this is a career, this is how we want to start trying to be able to make changes in a rapid manner. So, you know, companies are really needing more and more data scientists. And this isn't just like within this is within all sort of different sectors. We're having data scientists that are in, you know, shipping logistics and banking and, you know, all kinds of different sectors. So data scientists have like a huge opportunity in a lot of different career areas. So this is definitely one of those careers that's going to continue to surge now and it's going to be around after, you know, the pandemic is over as well. Same thing with management consulting. So as recent as like a decade ago, no, consulting firms employed only MBAs, but this has been switched over recently to PhDs. They want more PhDs because of the skills that you have learned while getting your PhD. You know, these are actually more PhDs are being hired into consulting firms than MBAs now because they're realizing that the PhD, you're prolific in identifying specific issues and solving these complex problems, you know, through critical thinking. This is what you've had to do to be able to get your PhD. And so consulting firms realize that this is actually what you do. You specialize in this. And so they're really trying to hire more people in there. And this is not just like the big names that you'll hear, you know, like McKinsey and Bain. Boston, but a lot of other small ones as well, like others that are niche and specific to certain areas. So like you can get into consulting and actually be specialized as well. And then of course, you know, we go over and always have the R&D science and engineering. This is undoubtedly the most popular option among science PhDs. Everyone wants to go into an R&D science position. And this is, you know, just how that is because the responsibilities of a research scientist in industry are basically conducting that research and making new discoveries. So this is a great avenue for, you know, someone who's going out of that science PhD. And almost every innovation, you know, based industry sector can offer opportunities for a science PhD. So again, not just in, you know, pharma and biotech, but you're also seeing this again in logistics and um, farming, you know, organizations like these are going over and saying we need to be able to figure out how to increase the efficacy of a compound getting somewhere for logistics. We want to have, you know, a research scientist going through and working with farms, making sure that, you know, that the food that we're producing, you know, is at the same level of quality as it's leaving the farm and getting to the fork. So there's lots of opportunities for science and engineering, you know, PhDs to excel within there as well. Medical writers and communication, um, there's various different, uh, you know, divisions of pharmaceutical or healthcare organizations that require a certain, like, you know, creation of and distribution of documents for several different purposes. So the medical writers who, you know, are also known as that sort of medical communicator are someone who plays an integral role in this function. They're the one who's going to actually create those regulatory applications. They're going to, you know, create the marketing material for drugs and medical devices because you've got to have someone who can actually take all that science-based information and then create a document that is, you know, readable and understandable by the general populace. So this is actually a, a big career that's going to be around for, you know, not just now as it's surging and we're seeing more and more stuff coming out, but something also that's going to be something that's going to be around long term. This is something that's going to survive and continue on. So this is 
also something if you really enjoy, you know, writing and working on those documents, creating papers, this is actually potentially a career really for you if you really like communicating about the science. Other opportunities is that medical science liaison. So this is sort of similar to, you know, the medical writer or communicator, but instead of actually, you know, taking the science and then disseminating it to someone who's a, you know, general lay person, you're someone who is, you know, this is a big opportunity for STEM PhDs and these highly specific positions or someone who's going to go through and take that science and then basically go to a key opinion leader in different, you know, organizations. And they're going to go through with pharmaceutical, biotech, you know, CROs, contracts, contract research organizations, medical device organizations. And the biggest misconception is this is sales. This is not sales. Actually, MSLs are not allowed to sell anything. So this is a position where you're going over and like just telling other people about the science. And so instead of actually writing about it, you're talking about the science. You're going over and meeting with people and letting them know like the newest discoveries, the new ish, um, the new ways of um, working with the drug or device and how it actually is like beneficial for you know the, the, the people at the end point. So you're actually going over and helping disseminate you know, the actual science without it going to the lay people, to letting other people know this is an avenue that you can, you know, look at with this compound. This is something you can do with this medical device that you, you know, might not realize, you know, basically get out there and help, you know, disseminate that science information to other people who that don't know about it at this time. So that's actually someone, if you don't want to write about it, you can actually then go and talk about it. Again, another, you know, opportunity that's been surging, going to surge and going to remain and survive through, you know, the pandemic and through and through long term for your career is an R&D project manager. So this is within not just, you know, again, you know, I, I keep saying farm and biotech. That's my bread and butter where I, you know, got my, you know, got my research, you know, my research background and where I was working at Genentech. But um R&D product managers aren't just within these fields and areas. You know, there's continuous innovation and development in all kinds of products. You know, so the su successful R&D, you know, program is essential for any company's future. They basically need to go and have somebody who can oversee lots of the projects and make sure it can go from, you know, basically from conception all the way to actualization and being disseminated out. So there's lots of different R&D divisions that need to be managed properly. And so this is something where you can utilize the skills that you've gained being a PhD, you know, teaching other RAs or undergrads or teaching other masters and PhD students, you know, keeping the lab personnel how to properly run something, making sure that the data that they're collecting is, you know, done in good, you know, good lab practices, that it's actually useful data, and then basically taking that out and disseminating what is the most intricate portions of this, and then being able to take it and pass it along to other people to make key decisions and whether or not we're going to follow this, you know, this product, or we're going to try and actually do more with this compound. So you're the, you know, the person who's doing all of that legwork in there and organizing all this data and making sure is this something that's going to be useful or, or not? And so this is a great opportunity for someone who really likes that management component of that, working with a lot of different people and seeing how everything, you know, works out and you know, continues to grow. Last one of these careers that's starting to see a lot more um, push in recently is this sort of research experience, you know, or user experience researcher or R&D user um experience researcher so this or scientists depending on the title and things so like this is something that it refers to someone who's word of working more with the emotions and attributes that a user has when exploring a particular product or system or service so this is going over and not just having is this what is actually going on with that that end user the person who's using it and then trying to figure out is there a better way of making it streamlined making it more user friendly you know something that we want them to go back to using the, the product or service or the you know the you know the the system so this is the person goes over and it's not just say like out to a consumer and like the you know real world but going over and working with uh different types of software you know going over and like with the different uh, scientific instruments. So someone over and saying like, okay, we want to make sure that this is optimized so that the people 
like using it, want to go back to use it, and they're not just sort of like, all right, this is too difficult, I can't learn it, and then just move away. So this is the person who goes over and actually does the research to make sure that someone actually enjoys using their product or using their service or using the, the, the software system. So you're going through and doing a lot of different research, but doing more of like, you know, you can have it either be, you know, technical based or software, web design, sort of things like this. So there's a lot of other areas to go along with this that's actually starting to go through and, and surge as well. And this is something that's going to be, you know, continuing on and surviving. You're going to see more and more of these type of careers in the future. So these are just seven of the careers that we're seeing that are still hiring. People have been getting hired. They're going to keep getting hired. And these are positions that you're going to be safe with if you're able to get them as the you know, second wave. Although we're not really in a wave, it's just continuing on. But you know, these are positions that you should really aim for and shoot for, you know, as you're trying to transition out of academia into industry. So thanks, everybody. And remember your value as a PhD and keep thinking and acting like an industry professional. See you guys next time.